Hello and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to our second annual KPSN Podcast Fest live episode. Welcome everyone to our uh, to our <laughs> live app. <ep. laughs> um, thank you very much for joining us. Today we are going to do a special episode that is kind of a newish segment we started last year um, with the you know 2020 year upon us, we thought it would be fun to just take a look 20 years back in time at the year 2000 in K-pop. So we ran down chronological list of uh, major debuts, comebacks, news items. Um, and then we did the same thing for 2001. But we covered January through June in an episode earlier that we published um, a couple months ago. And so today we're going to be looking at the second half of the year. Uh, we're going to go chronologically from July to December. Take a look back in our K-pop time machine and look at the history of Korean pop music in 2001. I love it. Um, and we put out a little poll on the Whova app and I enjoyed your answers. I was just curious as to how old people were in 2001. I was personally 13. Um, I was so, 11. And we saw some people who were like already in their 30s and some of you were babies and not born yet. Um, so we'll all have different <laughs> um, experiences of, of 21 coming for or of 2001 going forward. Um, but thanks for answering our poll. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was good to get some context for you guys. Because I don't want to talk down to you if you all were living through this, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but we have a visual component to go with our episode today, so we sure like do. To take that away? Here we go. Since we have the opportunity to do a uh, visual piece, here we go. We have made a beautiful slideshow to go with our fantastic episode today <laughs> yes and the uh, as this aesthetic as i put together here this is what the internet looked like in 2001 so um all of your <laughs> eyes if you don't remember this this is what it used to look like I, I should have made the background a repeating gif as well to like really drive it home but i didn't want to give everyone a headache but that's what the internet used to look like like this <laughs> So here we go. We are going to take a look into the year in K-pop. Is there anything we need to know before we just dive right in? Yeah, I think some. If you haven't listened to any of our um, K-pop 20 years in the past episodes before, I think it's important to know that the K-pop landscape was very different. It was obviously smaller, but the way that people promoted was very, very different. A lot of the albums we'll talk about today, like the album came out one month, but then the group doesn't start performing it on music shows for like two months. And then they put out songs from that album for like a year or two years even. Mm -hmm. um, so the very quick comeback cycle of the present was not a thing then at all. Um, also, people weren't very good. <laughs> uh, the, live, yeah. the live performances are all pretty touchy. Yeah, I think that that's the the biggest thing you have to prepare yourselves for is that the quality of the training module or model is not the same um, as it is today. So these like very well trained professional like streamlined idols that you see today is not what we saw in 2001. So we're going to get a pretty big range. Some are like surprisingly pleasant and others are like shockingly terrible. Um, but that's what makes these episodes so fun. Yes, indeed it does. So shall we jump in? Let's do it. All right. So our first comeback is on July 6th and this was a co-ed group called Cool and they put out a song called Jumbo Mambo. <laughs> I love 
this old stuff. I got to know these songs very well this time, <laughs> so I'm very excited. Um, we've talked about Cool on the show a couple of times because they were very prolific in the 90s and early 2000s, and a lot of their songs have been modern day covered for drama soundtracks mm-hmm. and other things. So like cool comes back up a lot. Yeah. They come up often and we often joke that it's a terribly named group because <laughs> trying to Google anything about cool K-pop group <laughs> is impossible nowadays. <laughs> but one thing I noticed, I also thought it was jumbo mambo, but it's actually jump with yeah, a P. Say jumpo. Yeah. Jumpo mambo. And then the girl screams, jump like really small in it um i thought mostly the song was really fun it was definitely my favorite of the cool songs that we've gotten on these kinds of episodes so far um but there is like a very questionable like caribbean theme to it when they do the actual like jumbo mambo is a little um you know you look at it sideways nowadays for sure, for sure. Uh, this song won two Inky Gaio trophies in August of 2001. And as noted here on the slide, um, the main singer girl had these tiny micro braids for some mm-hmm. of the stages. And those braids will be in 80% of these comebacks. This was the hairstyle. Boys and girls, mm-hmm. tiny braids. That's what everybody was doing. Yeah, we love to keep an eye on certain (laughs) trends that we spot throughout the year. So, so far throughout this summer, now we've got two trends to keep an eye out for. Micro braids and either Caribbean or Latin pop influences. For sure. All right, next, this is another co-ed group. This is Space A. They came back on July 7th with Cheating Man. So again, Latin pop influences, definitely apparent there. Also, not the Macarena, but Macarena-esque choreography in that it's very like, first this, then this, then this, then this, then swing it around. Yeah. (laughs) I wrote it as Zumba class. Like, it's like Zumba class choreo. They're like very much like doing a line. I was like very upset to have just now seen Space A for the first time because we did a whole episode about co-ed groups and I thought I found them all, but Space A slipped under my radar. Yeah, we didn't and have that. And they them. had a comeback a couple years previous to this where they were like full crazy Mortal Kombat costumes. And I just need to find out more about Space A for sure. But it was really hard to find any, there was no information on the internet about them in English none Mm. so i was like doing deep research and reading fan pages of people being like i loved space a and trying to put the so i need to put the puzzle pieces together another time but i'm very intrigued by this because they all seem really like sexy Mm -hmm. and like cool yeah they definitely had a very sexy vibe sexier than other co-ed groups because i remember when we looked at the other co-ed groups our kind of lament has always been that they don't interact enough and they don't like play up the fact that they actually have you know, both members, but this group did, and they'd like do a little bit of partner dancing and I thought they were really fun. Um, but they do have the, a new trend that I like to keep an eye on, uh, which I re- I've re- referred to in my notes as men ain't shit. Um, because <laughs> this is single is called a cheating man. And there is like the whole choreography in it where they like fight and they push each other away. Um, and that becomes a bit of a trend. We see a lot of, um, either cheating men or just generally no good, bad news men. Yes. No good. No good. Um, but that was space a, and I really think that song is pretty fun for that early two thousands clubby kind of energy body roll songs (laughs) yeah and i recommend watching the full stage because it ends with a lift and it was fun dirty dancing okay next we have a comeback from chakra and we have talked about chakra many times when we talk about first gen groups because they were very very popular but they had an extremely offensive concept Mm -hmm. their concept was indian but this was a mix of the country india and like first nations north american natives 
mixed into something really awful. And at the, when I first saw the thumbnail of this comeback, I thought, oh, Chakra, did you do something better? No. No. No, they didn't. Here is Oh My Boy. <laughs> Oh, chakra yeah so i it's not in that clip because it's not an important part of the song but the reason that this was immediately offensive is as soon as the song starts there are several parts where someone goes like oh jamaica oh god and it happens like so many times and they keep oh, and they just keep doing it yeah i remember when this started <laughs> i was like looking away from my computer and it, i was just listening to it and i was like this sounds offensive is this chakra and it was <laughs> But yeah, for this so. comeback, they did this whole... Chakra was, like, known for doing really wild things with their hair. Like, they... For every comeback, they would mm -hmm. have really... Like, taking gel to different heights. But for this one, they went with these, like, clown red... And the hair was just piled... Like, in this middle screenshot here. Like, it just looks so... They look like ratty raggedy and dolls or something. Yes, that's what I kept thinking, especially with the red and white striped costumes too. And then you look at the album cover where they're in their like sexy bathing suits, and it's a real it's a real disconnect here, Chakra. We're yeah. missing a lot of things, I think. Um, yeah, but they were Chakra was very 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 popular in the early two thousands. All right, next here's a big news story that I had never come across before. Usually when I do my research for these episodes, early rec, and I recommend it in all these episodes, NBC keeps a very good record of their music shows and has them all on YouTube on like a classic channel. So you can watch really old episodes of Music Camp because that's what Music Bank used to be called. Um, and they have full episodes and that's how I get a lot of my research started is like by watching those. And I was going through July, and after July, after the July 10th episode, there were no music camps for three months. And I was like, what happened? So I went digging in the Korean Wikipedia, and I found out what happened. Um, whoa. Knocked my note remote over, or my microphone over. Too excited. Okay. So in June of 2001, NBC had like an ex like a investigative journalism show called Stars in the Entertainment Industry, or the show's called 2580. The, the segment was called Stars in the Entertainment Industry, and they did like an expose on K-pop slave contracts. Because earlier in 2001, HOT broke up, um, and the, two, the three members that didn't stay at SM were very vocal about, like, we didn't get a fair shake. Mm -hmm. Um, so they interviewed some people and they like this, uh, there was a singer named Lee Unmi who like went on record being like, I'm in a slave contract. I make like two cents per album sold or like something crazy. Um, so this aired. Then the Korean Entertainment Producers Association held a press conference on July 10th. That's the picture over here to the left. You can see JYP in the white t-shirt if you recognize anybody. Um, but this was like JYP, Baby Vox, Kim Gun Mo, G.O.D., and a ton of other artists. And they all sat up at this press conference and said, none of, like, everything NBC said was untrue. We don't like this defamation. And none of us and none of our artists will appear on NBC until you say that you are sorry. <laughs> Um, and I guess at one point, JY, somebody on the stage said, like, there's no such thing as a slave contract. And this picture here on the right was a reporter who, like, screamed, like, you're a lie. Like, no, I did good journalism. Like, you are lying. And he had to be, like, drug out of the press conference. And JYP was like, okay, nobody at this table is in a slave contract. Yeah, specifically, no one on stage with us right now has any slave contracts. Yes. Um, so nobody, so Music Camp was off the air for months and nobody would appear. SM was also involved in the boycott but did not show up to the press conference. Interesting. But they, <laughs> but they also held their artists. 
Um, NBC did eventually publicly apologize, but they also like won all of the lawsuits that had been made because I guess all of these people also then filed a defamation lawsuit mm. and NBC won. They like the things they have said were true about the people they said they were true about, but like mm. all of these producers thought that it made them like, they just didn't like that. It made them look bad. Sure. was essentially the biggest beef. Um, well, and I mean, the idea of slave contracts in K-pop is an enduring idea and criticism that it still gets today. So the idea that like putting this package out there, although it was true and therefore good journalism, like they're all up in arms about the lasting impression of this. And they're right. It did make a lasting impression. It absolutely did. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that there was only Inky Gaio in the summer of, 20, of 2001. All right, next up. Okay, this was a comeback of a two-member boy group called UN, which, sta which stands for United N Generation. <laughs> it, that doesn't make any sense. United N Generation yeah. or like the N from the middle of generation? No, it's United and then N dash generation. All right. Whatever. <laughs> They're adorable. And this song is called Wave and I literally love it. It's so good. <laughs> UN. I loved this. I thought it was so fun so and I loved much. their shiny helmet hair and they just seemed like they were having so much fun. They're so cute. They were so cute. They sounded great. Alyssa, you heard those live vocals. Like that's yeah. a rare treat in, in 2001. Era, okay? For sure. Like did you hear those riffs? They were <laughs> solid. <laughs> <laughs> and like look at this long-haired one. He's so cute. He's freaking adorable. He's adorable. Um, so yeah, this one was a, like a pleasant surprise and it had a, it was, had an island theme to go with our summer trends. Um, but it wasn't in the music. Like the music didn't have any kind of tropical influence. No, it just has that more video game, video game sound. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, the other thing that I thought was funny about this, because like I said, at the beginning, people in these times were promoting songs and albums for a really long time. So this album came out in July and has a beach music video, but then when they were performing it in December, they were wearing like scarves and gloves <laughs> and doing like a Christmas version. Like they just had to keep doing it because that's how it works. You do yeah. it all year. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can go to the beach in the winter. Sure. If you really mm -hmm. want to. All right. July 12th, SM's darling girl group of the time, SES, came back with a surprise album called Surprise. <laughs> So much choreo that's just jumping. I know. I love it. <laughs> Um, so this was SES's four and a half album, uh, and it was a all of the Japanese songs that they had released up to that point, but now Korean versions of them. Um, and it sold 350,000 copies, which was underperforming for SES at the time. But compared to most of the things on this list, that is an insane amount of albums. Yeah, this one continued with the island concept in the music video, at least. And I felt like there's so much of this music video that has since become the like summer girl group music video <laughs> yeah. blueprint of like being on the boat and then dancing on the beach in white and, uh, and like, you know, having a day with your ladies on the, in a tropical place. Um, so that was really funny to see, especially because we recently did a, a summer episode where we looked at all these summer trends and I was like, Oh, this is where all these summer trends probably came from. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this comeback was very short lived, um, because SES was terribly overworked at the time and Bada like fainted from exhaustion in the middle of promotions. So they had to scrap them. And then the rest of the singles from this album were released without a music video and like, weren't 
promoted in any, in any way um, because SES was tired. Tired of carrying the whole industry <laughs> on their shoulders. <laughs> But I loved these outfits that were in the little uh, clip we showed. I just liked those very weird structured brown. These brown ones. Tops. And like, yeah, everybody's like halter tops and like the halter top or the tube top or the otherwise boxy tank with like a baggy pant is what I looked Mm -hmm. like at every middle school dance. So I always (laughs) really relate to these outfits. (laughs) I mean, brown floral is a, it's a choice. It is a choice. It (laughs) is a choice. There's a lot of brown. There's so much brown in this year. Well, another trend to keep an eye out for. (laughs) Um, July 27th, our first disbandment of this time, a co-ed group, Rura, disbanded when uh, member Youngwook enlisted. That was the end of the group, and they had debuted in 1994. And their biggest hits were in the late 90s, um, but they hung in until 2001. (laughs) Back when military enlistment meant the end of the group. Yeah, pretty much. All right, this is a comeback from ballad singer Wax, and the album and single were called Fix My Makeup. So Wax, we saw Wax at the Korea Times Festival. We did. Once. She's a beautiful, Forever beautiful ago. singer, and she makes is famous for these beautiful, beautiful ballads. And this music video for this song is eight minutes long. It's a very mm-hmm. long drama story featured here in the corner where there's a guy who works at the little cigarette stand and a little stressed out girl. And he always happily gives her her cigarette and her lighter. And then one day he notices that she's crying. So he gives her a note and then they like have a weird friendship. And then he saves her from a bunch of horrible men who are going to assault her. And then he goes to jail and then she feels bad about it. Yeah. It's a very, very dramatic astonishing. And (laughs) The first of ones that I noticed, there's a trend in this year also of very long, cinematic, over dramatic uh, music videos. And this one, yeah, I was only kind of paying attention to the story. And part of me was like, wait, is this about someone like getting addicted to smoking? (laughs) Is this like a PSA? Because there's so (laughs) much smoking in it also, which is uh, unheard of nowadays. But it's their meet Um, cue. But yeah, but it's their meet cue instead. (laughs) Yeah. It's like adorable that he remembers to give her her one cigarette. And like a, it's like that's the cute thing about it. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, music videos used to be longer when they played on TV mm-hmm. because you were trying to get your spot on the TV and keep people's attention yeah. for eight whole minutes. So you had to be cinematic about mm-hmm. it. And Wax is not actually in the music video at all. It's just the little movie. All right. Let's see if the video will co- will cooperate this time. But this is the debut of 14-year-old Hanul, which means sky. Um, and the song was called You Must Be Joking. <laughs> Um, so every single stage she did had a quick change like that. Like she either came out in a traditional outfit or like dressed like a baby. And then there would be two more reveals. Like then the skirt goes. Yes. And then the sh- that was amazing. I was like, <laughs> the first one was great because at first I was like, wow, like she's wearing a handbook on it. Like that's so fun. And then it gets revealed. And then there's two more. Like the orange dress turns into this top and skirt. And then the skirt turns into shorts. And I was like, four outfits in one comeback. Or, and it's a debut. This was really fun. Yeah. Um, but if that song sounded familiar to you, it's because it's a remake or a, an instrumental cover of the um, the song Venus. Who is that originally by? By Bananarama. I think that it's like, I don't think it's completely a cover. I think it's an interpolation because it uses a lot of the same melody, but it's different mm-hmm. in places, but it's mostly the same. But yeah, yes, so like it's a, Bananarama. Yeah. More than a sample, less than a cover. <laughs> 
Exactly, exactly. An interpolation, just music terms. A sample is if you literally took the recording and put it in your song, that's a sample. But if you just sing the melody of an existing song, that's an interpolation. Ooh. It's different than a sample. A new vocab word. How fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think this next one, this next one is exciting for this podcast. After H.O.T. broke up, this is the debut of solo artist Kanta with his song Polaris. <laughs> It continues in a similar fashion. Yes, but the most important part of this music video, as seen on this slide, is that later in this music video, as Kangta is clearly very tortured by the loss of this woman in his life, he decides to get into full drag and then get up real close to the mirror so that he can pretend he's kissing the girl again. But then it doesn't work, so he rips off the wig in a fury. There is so much <laughs> psychosis happening in this music video. The entire thing is made up of him like moping around his house and then it like cuts like it it fades from where he's laying in the bathtub or laying on the bed to like that's where she used to be. So obviously he's like reliving these moments and being her. And then he like sadly like does his full face of makeup and like it is what the look fuck, how beautiful he Kangta. is. He looks gorgeous. Like that's the most beautiful I've ever thought Kangta is. Like this is the most attractive the nails, I've ever he been. Put on nails. He even put on nails. <laughs> he went full, full drag, and I mean, wow. And then he had the audacity to perform it, looking like you song on the yes. stage. <laughs> If that's not you, song. <laughs> yeah, he totally did do like the glasses oversized blazer for every stage. Like, yeah, I'm not in a boy band anymore. I'm, I'm a serious artist. Not in uh, a boy band, not yet a woman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was our first major H.O.T. solo debut. And we have we joke about Kangta every once in a while. He comes up on our show. He causes up trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, this is a comeback from an early gen group that we've discovered through this show that we think is pretty cool. These are a girl, a trio, a girl trio named Diva. And this is their song, Perfect. <laughs> rarely see a buzz cut on a woman that is very true and it is pretty cool and i like that in that one i made me laugh every time in the clip we just played the girl with the braids is mane in frame and then the bald girl kind of comes in and it she looks like she's side-eyeing her like are you taking it's like a moment (laughs) where she seems to be like taking the screen it's funny um yeah this Diva's biggest like year as a group was actually in 2000 Mm -hmm. and this album was like it sold less and they kind of sold less and less until they petered out um and this is very different than the other Diva music like a lot different so I kind of get if people weren't into it because it's not what they had been selling us in 2000 yeah I was kind of disappointed because we really like when we got to Diva in our 2000 deep dive we really liked them they had these like great like raspy rapper and like the girl with the buzz cut was like the raspy rapper I think and they Mm -hmm. wore these like slick leather suits and the 
this song is just like very clubby and it kind of has like a bit of a like mambo esque yeah. to it. But the live performances are so terrible. Like the fact that they they made that girl with the buzz cut sing that line yeah. was almost cruel because she cannot it sing sounds it for the super li- bad. It sounds so bad. And I think she was the rapper in the first right. album. So it's like, why did you do this to any of these girls? Like this is just a, a waste and a shame. Yeah. Sorry. And Diva. those very yeah, sorry, Diva. I was also triggered by is too serious the word but the <laughs> the tube tops in the video with the super tight band and then the really baggy tube top it just like gave me war flashbacks because yeah. I had like five of those and that's a bad look it's and it's not, not it doesn't look. look cute they look no. sloppy yeah they do they do but that was diva next all right this is Yu Sung Joon who was really 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 popular at this time and I'll get into that and more in a second, but this is his song. Wow. Wow. What a beefcake. Beefcake. That's um, all my notes say. What a yeah, beefcake. He, beefcake. <laughs> and he was really popular and he'd had really popular songs up to this point. This album debuted at number one and sold almost 400,000 copies in the first week, which in 2001 Damn. was a ton of copies. But this was his last moment in the sun because a little while after this comeback, he ran away to the United States to avoid being enlisted. And he was banned from the country of Korea for the rest of his life. Like, banned. Mm. Like, he's not a... They kicked him out. Yeah. And he has since, to this day, like, been making repeated appeals to the Korean Supreme Court to try and get the ban lifted. He's made filmed apologies on his knees. He has done, like, tearful interviews and so much. And I believe the ban still stands to this day. And Mm -hmm. I think that he's mostly lived in China all of this time Mm -hmm. and continued to try to do music. But yeah, he's not welcome in Korea. And all he had to do was just go to the army. But he didn't want to. And he lost everything. Well, important. (laughs) I know. And you know what? No no idol has ever tried to pull the same (laughs) thing twice. (laughs) So we all learned a very valuable lesson. Yeah. All right, time for September. This is another ballad, and if you are TV watchers, I don't know, Tim, you might recognize this fellow. This is Lee Ki Chan with Love Is Gone Again. That is like, that's a quality <laughs> R&B. Uh, that was the crooning. That song was written by JYP, but it was sung lovelyly by Lee Ki Chan, who, when I saw his face, I said, wait, I know you. And it's because he's the evil brother on Sense8. Yeah. The one that gets the other late, the Sense8 locked in jail. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I was surprised to know that he was such a crooner. What I a know. talent. He is a hiding. very... In, indeed indubitably yeah beautiful <laughs> voice and he has quite a, a a large acting career so i feel like acting is what he's mostly been doing but great singer and the song won six music show trophies in 2001 so in september everybody was going through it with leaky chan well good for you love left it left they need it yet again <laughs> All right, this is exciting. On September 10th, we have a debut of an artist who at the time was called T, but you might know her as Yoon Mi Rae, 
and this is her debut song, As Time Goes By. As time goes by, Oh, talk about lovely crooning. Absolutely amazing. When I was pulling research and I got to this debut stage, I just like wrote like, what a breath of fresh. She's amazing. Yeah. She's such a great singer. Amazing. And she sounds exactly the same still. So amazing. Um, But as noted in the 2000 episode, in 1999, Yoon Mi-rae's now husband, but then boyfriend, Tiger J.K., went to jail along with the rest of the members of their group for methamphetamine use. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they were banned from TV. So she was in hiding for two years up until this debut. And her, the name T, her real name is Natasha. Like her birth name is Natasha and she goes by Tasha. So T was an even short, even more short. A nickname for the nickname. (laughs) Yeah. Just T. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, and you can see the box braids and the album art, or the little micro braids in the uh, album art. There's a lot of, like, if you look up uh, Yoon Mireille's album art and promotions, there's a lot of really terrible qu- cultural appropriation in her general style. But she's black. She's allowed to do that. Oh, that's she? right. Oh, wait. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. No, you're totally right. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I take that back. I stand so correct. She's the only one who gets she's allowed. <laughs> she's allowed to do it. It's not appropriation because it's her own culture. That's right. I forgot about that. Yes. Yun Mire. Yun Mire. Um, but Tash. as you know, this was September 10th. So um, on September 11th, there was a terrible terrorist attack and it really, really shook up the world. So there was also no music shows. People did not release albums for like two weeks. There were like Asia. One Asia candle telethon concerts on T. Like, everybody was only focused on 9 11 for like most of the rest of September, just mm-hmm. for context sake. So, our next thing is a little while later. Yes, this is the debut of a pop star named Hari Sue, and the song is called Love Hurt. <laughs> Harisu. I had never heard of Harisu before. I looked her up and then I was truly amazed to find out that Harisu is a trans woman. Mm -hmm. Yes, she became very popular because you can see this photo here. Uh, This is a makeup ad that she was featured in, which got her national attention. And I read that actually the Adam's apple in this photograph is added in. She does not have it. Um, But they added it, I guess, to highlight and emphasize the fact that she had that she was a trans woman chosen as a, a makeup ambassador or spokesperson. Yeah, 2001 was a huge year for Harisu. Um, she had debuted as an actor, younger, and played some male roles for a couple of years, and then transitioned in the mid-90s. Um, and then in 2001, there was the makeup ad, and then she was in a Turbo music video, and then KBS did a special documentary about her, and she wrote a book. And when you do all those things, you also have to become a pop star (laughs) it's part of the package deal (laughs) um so she put out this club banger that's so fun (laughs) yeah and the music video is really cute like the focus is definitely on more on like the photo shoot it seems and the dance practice of like look we're making her an idol there's a lot of like behind the scenes kind of yes yes of the i thought the training of the choreography was like especially sweet to watch of her like oh she's going through the motions of like becoming an idol yeah so this was a really fun discovery apparently her next single that comes out in 2002 was more popular 
So Ooh. we'll get back to Harizu next year. I to guess. be continued. All right, October, and we have more HOTs on the table. So this is Moon Hee Joon, who was the other HOT that did not leave SM. And this was his debut called Alone. Uh, here we go. And prepare your ears. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is really <laughs> crazy. Um, this was He June's post HOT debut. Like I said, it did go to number one and it sold over 300,000 copies. But HOT fans did not like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they thought that the rock, like the rock and the auto tune, they like were not happy about it and they didn't like it very much. They were supporting him as fans do, but like they, the vibe was not fun for the HOT fans. <laughs> I don't think this vibe would be fun for anybody. <laughs> no. It's, it's truly terrible. And there's one part where he just, like, holds this note that is so <laughs> flat, but also so loud and so long. I, like, how how did anybody allow this? How, where were the producers? I don't... I think they were just letting Kangta be in charge. Like, Fucking if you Kangta. look at, like... See, it all comes back. <laughs> it's his fault. It's... Always Kongta's But Kongta had a beautiful song that he That's put out. That's true. I guess he, I'm sure he didn't like Heejun very much. He was probably trying to hurt him. No, I don't know. But mm. the auto tune in this, there are certain. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here Alone first. was a plot. <laughs> it was a plot. Kongta was trying to steal all the Trying to sabotage himself. all the other HOTs. Um, but the, like, there are times when, like, bad auto tune. I feel like it activates my gag reflex. Like, something about it, like, it really, it literally makes me feel sick. And there are parts of this song that, like, I, I like, gag on it. It sounds so awful. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's, it's unforgivable fun. and inexcusable. <laughs> unforgivable. <laughs> All right, moving on. All right, this is a boy band, a debut of a boy band that was called K-Pop. Okay, that's how early it was that someone could just yeah. take that name. <laughs> K apostrophe pop. Although supposedly the pop stood for population. Oh, interesting. And their debut song is called Point Five. <laughs> can't believe there's a group that has a worse name than cool i know right (laughs) um well i know you have something interesting to tell us about k-pop that i don't know but i'll just get out of the way before whatever terrible thing you're gonna tell me that i was i did not expect to think that k-pop would be good like mm-hmm. i'd expected it to be really terrible just based on the poor choice of name yeah but i was like actually kind of impressed with them like they didn't suck live they were like dancing wasn't bad it felt like a more second generation version of mm. a k-pop but earlier yeah. i was like oh these guys figured the formula out already like but early yeah huh. i totally agree they felt like a complete package to me in a way i didn't expect and i thought that this uh song and the like violin that's in it or the strings that are in it it would just like fit very well in the time period i was like this could have mm-hmm. been an in sync b-side or something yeah um but i re- i found when i was like just looking i was just looking for pictures of them i wasn't even like sure. trying to dig up the dirt but i found i shit you not like five different articles from reputable and questionable sources alike and they all said the same thing which was that in 2004 two of these members had been in a relationship with each other and that one of them had cheated on the other with another male idol shut up and that's why they disbanded i shit you not five different sources 
And there wow. was an article from 2020 that asked one of the members, and the, the members who were in the relationship, I didn't find any article that named them. Okay. And there was one of the members was asked in like 2020, like, why did you guys disband? And he said that it was because of disagreements with the management. But mm. the time, like the articles of the time were saying that it was this rumor. And whether or not it is true, the rumor of it all seems to be a part of maybe why they disbanded or at least it followed the disbandment when it was announced. So I think we're going to need to maybe dive into K-pop and find some, we're going to have to look for some first language sources and dig in because I need to know more. I need to know more. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's more fun. A scandalous gay affair is way more. I was really worried you were going to tell me that they were all murderers or something and that I would like, have to feel bad about no it was fun gossip. okay okay good okay good <laughs> fun gossip and scandal that i need to know more about of course so we'll come back to it all right this is another comeback this was a female solo artist named Che jong and this song is called magic <laughs> Macarena style one two three four uh, uh, dance but I laughed really hard at all of the um because this music video just starts with like those men in the church like ripping their shirts open um and I thought they looked a lot like Spike from Buffy um and I felt like there was a lot of great great Buffy elements in this music video (laughs) yes this girl was like really pretty. Mm-hmm. That was like my main note. I was like, so oh, wow, pretty. she's so pretty. And yeah. her hair was like always so like blonde and like blowing in the wind and had like mm-hmm. such good body. Like, yeah. I don't know. She's beautiful. She had good hair. She was pretty. But this was her last album. This was her third and final album. And she transli- like transitioned into just being an actress after mm. this point. Well, t- she's not a great singer. She, no. she is. She made an okay. Face, a much prettier you know? face, I think. <laughs> yeah. No offense. No offense. Um, all right. This is another comeback of a female solo artist. This is Lee Jung Hyun, and this song is called "Me Cha Going Crazy." <laughs> Lee Jung Hyun is actually better known by the stage name Ava that she had not adopted at this point, um, but would later. Mm. Um, yeah, I thought she sounded like Hyuna. <laughs> she does that kind was of interesting, like that, the little like baby rap voice. But yeah, the com- all the comeback stages for this, like leather, and sometimes she would wear like a really harsh uh, bob wig, mm-hmm. kind of like Dominic. Dominatrix Catwoman. Yeah. Circus. Or big top hats sometimes yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, this was so much wilder than anything we had ever seen up and like up until this point in a good way. I thought it was so fun. Like this had a real I feel like this had a real concept that like required commitment um, yeah. in a way that like I don't know, like some other it's just like a, oh, we're just, you know, wearing <laughs> tube tops and <laughs> there's like no yeah. concept but this is like a character in a story for sure um yeah this album sold 80,000 copies and I also just thought sign of the times there's a song at the end of this album called no more terror that includes sound bites of George W. Bush giving speeches wow 2001 <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <sighs> All right, now it's time, comeback time for Queen Um Jung Wa yes. with a song called All Goes Away. <laughs> Face shield. She knew. <laughs> ahead of her time. Way ahead of her time. Um, this was Um Jung Wah's seventh full studio album. 
And um, yeah, the concept seemed to be gloves. Yeah, like disco and glam and these crop top corsets. Yes, these I had to take a screenshot of the backup dancers in the music camp. They are wearing like crop tops that have like a mesh see-through corset under mm-hmm. like they're so elaborate and yeah. hilarious and amazing. And, and they're from looks the like music Madonna in her mm-hmm. like ripped tool with her little and she had like really harsh tiny bangs. Like teeny bangs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought this song there were parts of this melody that almost sounded like that song um like I want some hot stuff, baby, this oh, yes. evening. But it like never quite went there. It was a it was mm. a tamer disco Save track. Winter. Yeah. But still for a fun sure, one. Sure. Love Um Jamal. Yeah. All right, time for November. This is once again a co ed group. Co ed groups used to so really many. be a thing. Mm-hmm. And this is Sharp with a song called My Lips Like Warm Coffee. <laughs> One of those guys is very hot. Yes, the guys in Sharp were very hot. And they are pretty naked in the music video. Like, the girls are wearing, like, overalls and strolling in the park. And the dudes are undressed. That's good. Giving us exactly what we want. Exactly what we want. Um, But we covered Sharp very extensively in episode 55 of this podcast, if you want to hear the whole thing. But uh, about two years after these performances, this whole thing blew up because the blonde one with the flippy hair is an evil bully (laughs) and she was super mean to the girl who was standing alone on the side and doesn't get a dance break she the blonde one thought she was the star she was real mean it all blew up in a very public press conference yikes so go check that out if you want to hear the full sharp story but it seems apparent in all of these the way these music show stages are staged that they were not friends, that they did not get yeah. along, that the blonde one was the most important. Like, it's really apparent in the stages. Yeah, I mean, the fact that she literally spends the entire song standing to the side <laughs> and yes. doesn't dance at all is just so weird. But whatever. Whatever. It's a very, very sharp. pretty song. I like it. Yeah, it's it. nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Breaking news. On November 15th, Psy, who debuted earlier in the year 2001 with a smash hit album, and everybody loved him. He was arrested for smoking marijuana, and he spent 25 days in jail. And during this time, his beloved grandfather passed away while he was in jail. So he says that this is the greatest regret of his life, that he did this dumb thing and that he missed his grandfather dying. Um, and then he was good from, he kept his nose clean from then on. And now look at him. And now he's a CEO. P Nation. <laughs> All right. Here are the real true stars of 2001. The most popular K-pop group at this time. G.O.D. came back with Road. <laughs> Yeah, so G.O.D., uh, this album sold 1.7 million copies. Damn. And that is only like 10,000 less than their album, or 100. Th- they sold 1.8 in 2000 for their 2000 album. So this was like truly the height of G.O.D.'s popularity. This song won seven music show trophies. Um, it was a huge smash hit. And they looked like little popper boys and they're little, I had this screenshot, this one boy, I, he looked like a Muppet to me <laughs> with this like hat over his eyes. He's in like scarf. Oliver Twist over here yes. in the corner with his scarf, like tiny Tim. Yeah. Oh wait, that's a different one. That's 
I'm mixing up Dickens plays. Anyway. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I never remember this guy's name, but I always call him Jackson 2.0. Um, and I was shocked to see him without his sunglasses uh, in the music video because I'm like so used to only ever seeing him with, with glasses on. With sunglasses But he on. did have them in several of the stages. So I was like, all right, we're living up to the, we're living up to it. Yeah. Um, but the music video for this one is another really long music video. All of the members of G.O.D. get weird boxes and maps delivered to them. And then they have to like chase it down. And then there's a giant duck and giant eggs and some kids. And then they're yeah. all holding eggs and laughing in a pile. And then it they ends learns with about like, life, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it just like ends with a shot of the really big rubber duck in like a street or something. It's really fucking weird. I don't know. <laughs> But it's a pretty song. Nice it crooning. It's a very pretty song. All right. This is another comeback. This is a group that we've covered in all of our first Jenny episodes. This is Click B, who were half boy band, half instrument band. And this was a single called To Be Continued. <laughs> Yes, this is very, very different from everything that Click B released up until this point. Like, they usually were kind of doing, like, a rock rap, almost Beastie boys kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, they, they were, were much very louder. loud and jumpy. And so, yeah, that they all downed these, like, red suits to, like, sit and do a little, like, Latin croon song. Yeah. It's very interesting. Mm. And they're very good singers. This was nice. And one of the, like, few performances that then held up from music video to stage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to take pictures of these. I had to include so much hair pictures on this slide. Like, that one screenshot when in the music video when the guy turned to the side. I was like, oh, my God, the hair goes so far back. I have to take Oh, yes. This. this guy right here is, <laughs> yes. like, this is, like, a real anime hair right here. But I particularly noted, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but this guy, he's the, yeah. like, one, two, three in the corner hair both jong han and jennifer aniston would be proud of right like yeah. that is gorgeous perfect face framing gorgeous everybody's hair is so shiny so Straight. shiny so shiny <laughs> and this guy's getting getting creative with the half ponies and he looks like he has ribbons in his hair how fun yeah a lot so of fun, we're taking a lot be. of risks <laughs> all right this is another debut this is a girl group called kiss which stands for Korean International Superstars. And their debut single was called Because I'm a Girl. She looks like Jessica. Just she does. It's a great job. Yeah, so... Kiss got a lot of attention for this debut because of the music video. It has like a nine minute music video that stars these two actors that were pretty popular at the time. So like people watched the music video because of the actors. Um, the story in this music video is it's truly wild. Um, but generally the photographer man takes a picture of a girl and then like over a really long time they fall in love. And then one day, she's playing around in his photo room, and she spills chemicals directly into her eyes. Like, ah, chemicals in her eyes. And then seemingly the guy breaks up with her to go ride motorcycles is, like, what it seems like. And then she has surgery and wakes up, and then someone hands her this magazine that she is on the cover of, and it says, date rape, really big on the magazine for whatever reason. No explanation of why. <laughs> And then she's like, huh, and she's walking around and then she sees her ex-boyfriend and he's blind now because he gave her his eyes. Yeah. 
You know, that classic story. And then they don't end up together. No. Like, she sees him at the racetrack, like, listening to the motorcycles with his seeing eye dog. And he, like, has a picture of her, like, just in his hand. And she, like, (laughs) sees the picture and knows that it's him and, like, instantly knows everything that happened. And doesn't say anything. And he just walks away. And, like, why? Why can't we be together now? Why? Why? But I also wonder if this has to do like I don't want to call it a trope but a very similar plot line happens in the untamed and I wonder if this is like an old legend or something or like a fable or something about giving your loved one your eyes but somebody wrote in the context of the untamed like well he could have just given one eye and then we'd each have an eye and now we can both see and I was like oh shit I didn't even think about that yeah but oh well he gave up his career and his eyes for her. Yeah. No, it totally reminds me of like a like an email forward or like a story that someone would leave in their instant messenger away message like in 2001. Like some sad story about a boy <laughs> and girl who are in love and the girl gets in an accident and she wakes up and she's like, where's my boyfriend? And they're like, he gave you, he his, gave heart. you his heart. Yeah. Or like, like an urban been legend. And yeah, it's yeah, like... Yeah. Send this to ten people who believe in love to meet your fruit, your real love, <laughs> or bad Make luck sure for you ten forward years. This. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real two thousand one thing. Yeah. All right, now it's time to clean up this hot. Finish up these hots. These are the other three hots, the ones that left SM Entertainment and the and ones they- who talked to NBC. Yes, uh, and they debuted as a trio called. JTL and their debut single is called Enter the Dragon. So tough. Did you just curse at me, HOT? So tough. Was that some bleeping I heard? I heard bleeps. I heard bleeps. <laughs> We have gotten this group in our random game before. So we have watched this music video, which we have a screen cap of in the middle. Um, And the theme of it is basically just them doing martial arts in a warehouse. And then there is this like Bruce Lee with nunchucks made out of water. Oh, it's their sweat. That's gross. From their working so hard, their sweat forms this digital sweat Bruce Lee who does kicks and things. Wow, that is gross. It's very gross. <laughs> it's very gross. Um, but JTL, because of their talking to NBC, because of their leaving SM, because of everything, it was very hard for them to get on to music shows or to get anyone to play this song on the radio because like they had disobeyed Lee Suman and they left and they were not gonna get attention. Um, this made their fans very upset. So once again, the SM building was egged over JTL being barred from shows. Um, and I think a lot of the fans like also helped like crowdfund and like, I don't know, the JTL comeback was like supported by the people who still cared for those three. Um, yeah. but they were up against, they were up against a lot because they had left, they had left. Yes, it does. As someone just commented, it does sound like JYJ SM repeated this mistake two times. <laughs> SM doesn't learn from its mistakes i think we can all agree (laughs) that it has there are many examples in which they definitely don't uh and this is one of them for sure all right next up is something a little bit different this is a male uh trot duo called can and this song is called spring days of my life and it was a big hit in 2001 Um, yeah, that was a fun one. I, it's bouncy and fun, but I had to note the other, the one of these guys, the hair gel. It's really like pushing boundaries. Oh yeah, reaching new heights. Yeah, 
But this is a fun song. It's like a trot song with great raspy vocals, and it has this like amazing electro organ at the beginning, and then there's like all these electro electric guitar riffs in it. Um, so it's like a interesting mix of trot and rock, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's good. It's fun. All right. This is one time. They were YG's big boy band at the time. I say big, they were popular, but they were like YG. <laughs> they were a YG's boy band at the time. Um, and this song is called Mother. <laughs> It's so yeah, it's catchy. not bad. It is very catchy. Um, the music video for this one is another really long story music video where a kid is just getting hassled by like mean guys on the street and mean guys at the playground and people are just like being mean to him. And then at the very end of the video, as noted here next to this picture next to us uh at the very end of the video his mom runs out of the house with an umbrella and she chases all the bad guys away (laughs) adorable um but this one with the very long hair i don't think i i always think when we get to one time or talk about one time i was like oh is that one teddy because teddy from yg is one of these people but it's never the like hot one i think it is Mm. but this one with the long hair was like so tan and his hair was so long and in every stage he just looked so gorgeous yeah very (laughs) handsome he looked like a ken doll or something Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. this song was fun i liked it yeah one time All right, this is a group that we've talked about a bunch of times because I think we got them as the Random Gang group in the first part of 2001 Mm -hmm. um, because we usually try to keep it in the time period. So once again, this is Milk with Come To Me. And I love this song. It's a great song. They're so cute. Um, so Milk was a group that was under an SM subsidiary. They weren't like a full SM group, um, but they only put out this album that was called With Freshness, and then they featured on a couple SM Town albums, but that was all Milk ever got to do. Yeah, they and mostly we, stayed in that SM basement. And as we noted when we got them in the random game, uh, SNSD's song Into the New World, that like is their you know enduring song of justice and peace in the future it was supposed to be a milk song and they took it away from them and held it and gave it to girls generation so i don't know maybe the world could have been different but i don't know they're just so adorable yeah they are very cute the stage i was a little shocked was like very rough one of the stages (laughs) that i watched like definitely not the kind of polished sm performance we're used to um and i wonder yeah i wonder if they just like weren't if they didn't like care to invest the time in like training them or if they i don't know i don't know what happened but it feels like they they got overlooked significantly by their company yeah um but that was our last debut of the year because here's the very last thing on our timeline this is another debut of a boy band called ocean Five in Korean is O, so it's ocean. Oh, I was wondering. I was saying, because they spell it with the number five, right? And so I was yep. like, five shin? Is it supposed to be like station? Like sh- shun? I, I was going through all the different possibilities, but okay, ocean. Mystery. Yes, it's ocean. Ocean. And this is more than words. hair so shiny and long I like was obsessed with it in every stage I was like look at his beautiful hair (laughs) 
Yeah, this was surprisingly pleasant. I thought the music video looked like a fake boy band because like a boy band from a movie or something um, because they the do. The plot of the music video felt familiar and I was like, did Maybe 98 it's Degrees a, do I was going to say 98 Degrees too because, because, because they're trapped they start in a tunnel. tunnel. They're, mm-hmm. Yeah. They're in a car and they're trapped in a tunnel, like the traffic. And they like inter- they're entertaining all the people in the tunnel, and people are leaning out of a bus, and then they get on top of a truck, and they're like, "It's more yeah. than a word." And I was and like, "Why they- have I seen? I feel like I've seen this before." I know. I was like, "Either this is a 98 Degrees music video, or I have seen a movie in which a fake boy band has done this." Um, but then it ends with them like on a big stage, like in front of a crowd, with all of the like ocean posters and stuff and I was like this the staging of this concert feels very fake and very yes. like like a Disney movie because it's a debut <laughs> they don't have fans right to be filming Absolutely. the stage yet yeah true um but I want to look more into ocean someday because when I was looking at their like timeline the band like never disbanded but then in 2020 I believe they added seven brand new, like, Ocean Lives Again. Wait, and they added seven members? Like, I don't so now think any Ocean, of the old so ones So now we have Ocean's it. 12? No, I don't think any of the old ones are, like, in it oh. anymore. I feel like they just, like, kept it a thing, and now there's, like, a new class of Ocean. I need to dig into it more, but it appears there's, like, a new class right, of we'll Ocean. we'll come back to this, too. We're going to come back to Space, space A, a <laughs> K-pop, and, and Ocean. Ocean. Yeah, to be continued. <laughs> um, well, that is my timeline. Those are all the things I have. Yay! That is it. That is the year 2001, at least the second half of it. Um, some general trends that we noted yeah. as we watched uh, through the years. In the first half uh, during the summer, definitely a lot of the like Caribbean and tropical or like Latin vibes in the actual music. Um, and then I felt like the winter and the fall had a very heavy like string component. Mm. A lot of the songs had like dr- dramatic violins or something like that. Um, the cheating theme yeah. happened throughout a lot of the music videos like Hanul the little 14 year old yes. uh, debut her music video which is a very fun like one take music mm-hmm. video through this restaurant is about her finding this boy that she's dating on a date with another boy or on another uh, on a date with another girl um, and then you know she like and goes she and flirts around. with a bunch of other people around. Yeah. And makes him all jealous. Um, so men ain't shit. Yeah. A great uh, trend throughout the year. And also I just wrote like generally so much smoking. Yeah. In music videos. It was the same. Like, I couldn't believe. It was the same in the early half of 2001. There was, I remember that being the plot or of like a big part of other. Cause remember that one at the early 2001 where the guy had the creepy doll of the girl in his building. Yes, and I just, will never forget that music. And he video. would just he just set the doll on the counter and then like paced in front of it and smoked, and that was like yeah. a big part of the music video. Um, yeah, the that world was, was different. The world was different, and you could smoke on yeah. TV, and it didn't. Um, it was allowed. And so now I they guess get they'd... blurred out, and idols have to just light a match <laughs> instead. People with matches in their mouth is the funniest thing to me. Um, But yeah, style wise, I just thought it was kind of interesting because in 2000, we did have a lot of metallics and plastic pants and very like millennium, like Y2K future Mm -hmm. clothes. Whereas this one, it seemed a lot more neutral, like a lot of white, a lot of brown, like we noted, just like brown, neutral colors in people's outfits. Um but also the fashion, it didn't seem like anyone was really taking fashion risks. Like it really was like halter tops and big pants on like every single girl. There was like nothing, I don't know, nothing out of the... It all felt very um, inexpensive. Ready to wear. <laughs> like, like they were cool yes, kids at the very mall. very much off the rack. Yes, the mall fashion I think was the trend. And like a lot of neutral tones. We didn't get a lot of um, bright colors really. There was a lot of brown and gray and white. Um, so I don't know. I guess we were toning it down for the second half and of yeah, 2001. For the hair, it was like the, the micro braids trend like on a lot of people. But then otherwise... The bleach chunks seem to have like um, faded away. Like 
in early 2000, there was very chunky highlights, which like were going away more. And people did a lot have like straight boys with very long hair was a fun thing that I think came up in a couple of these. Yes, a lot of boys with long hair, which is fun. Because that's coming um, back around. Yeah, it is. It is. Boys are getting shaggy. And we love to see it. Yeah, because I think that trends do, I guess, trends are supposed to take like 20-year cycles or things like that. So I've noticed in 2021 that with the boy groups, the boys are either growing their hair very long or doing a buzz cut, which I think mm-hmm. at this time was a pretty standard boy idol thing to have long hair or to have yeah. none hair. Or to have no hair at all. Jackson 2.0 from J.O.D. loves a Oh, yeah. Cut. Keep it smooth. Keep it smooth. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was 2001. I enjoyed a lot it. of these songs very much. And um, we uncovered some mysteries and some people we'll have to look into. Another oh, I'm very excited for our <laughs> even deeper dive into these uh, scandals and mysteries of 2001. And if you're interested in looking more into these music videos or stages, please check out our YouTube uh, channel, AMA K-Pop Pod. Um, We have a whole playlist of both music videos and stages for every single artist that we talked about today. So check it out. Yes. um, And yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we'll be right back with our random game. Oh my God, we're back and it's days later. (laughs) Speaking of time machines. Yes, we are putting ourselves back into our time machine for just a few days. Just going back a few days in time to finish this episode like we always do with a random game. But sincerely, thank you to everybody who was there uh, for the taping of the part you just heard. It was so fun to see y'all chatting in the side. Uh, while we were doing the show and it was nice to have your encouragements and uh, also apologies as I have edited and listened back to the show to anyone who was only listening for all the times we were talking very clearly about things people could see and then I didn't describe them for you the listeners (laughs) but I put the slideshow that everyone was looking at in the description of this episode so you could, so you could click along, you could see the videos, you can see the pictures that. Yes, so all visual compliments and supplemental texts are linked in the description. Um, All right. All that said, it's time for a random game. And when we do episodes in the past, we hope to and try to get random game groups that are also from the past. Keep the vibe going. Uh, So today we got a hip-hop trio that debuted in 1996 called Goofy. Yep. Goofy. Uh, They, I, it was hard to find a lot of information about them. The English Wikipedia page has a sentence, which is (laughs) the sentence Shannon just said. (laughs) They they existed. Um, And I found this other article that said they, the original um, two of the members had gone to school together and they wanted to create a hip hop duo similar to DJ Doc. So they went to Mm -hmm. the person who produced that rapper um, or that group uh, and the agency decided to form a three member group instead. Then they put a like center member who was going to be the main vocalist. And so that's how they became a trio. Um, But they, I guess had some success. This said that their second album wasn't as popular as their uh, first one. And they did release a third, but they have maybe continued to be around because they have an album that came out as recently as 2016. And in 2008, they replaced one of their members with a new member to continue as a trio. So I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. Maybe Goofy has had a long lasting, (laughs) a long lasting career. Perhaps. Um, So we found one of their music videos off of their second album from 1998. Um, The title is Biryun, which means like tragedy, I think. Um, And um, yeah, it looks like they have some nice middle part 90s boys haircuts, according to the thumbnail. So I'm excited to see this 90s fun. (laughs) Yeah, let's go. Here we are, 480p at most. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right, click play when I say go. Three, two, one, go. All right. Oh, okay. Are we in a small room with low ceilings? Yeah, that ceiling's really low. Wait, do you have sound? Oh, there's mine. Yeah, it's coming. It, the umchas are coming in. They're coming in. Oh, I see. It's, it's a <laughs> slow build, a slow burn. Okay, a lot of things are happening in this music video. So many things. A lot of dramatic looks. Wow, so many really, really, really bad. Like, I don't even know what those are. Like, Dread fake lock. dreads. Lock. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Little twists. A lot of torso. Tiny yarn braids. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> angles are really low on all these shots. Yes. Oh, wow. They're wearing a lot of silk. Oh, and the shirts are just open. So much torso. <laughs> and the wind and machines. And the wind machine. <laughs> like, I honestly, but the thing is, is I can't tell if these guys are being cheeky or in a serious. way that, like, Blink-182 was when they did that video where they made fun of boy bands. Uh -huh. Like, I can't tell because these guys seem goofy to me. I can't tell if they're being ironic or if they thought they looked awesome. Well, they are called Goofy. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So maybe it's on purpose. I don't know. The stuff with the girls seems too serious. And, like, they're really dancing. They are really dancing. They are, like, oh, getting man. on the floor. Wow. I don't know. But that the background of this is truly just that standard Mortal Kombat do, 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 do. Like <laughs> dance music is very funny to me. Yeah, this era of it is just. Funny. Oh man, they're just like tough guys at a pool hall, but maybe one of the ladies left their gang to go to another gang. And yeah, they they seem to be fighting over a girl. The gang. This guy is like a teeny tiny dream catcher on his necklace as like a choker on his bare yeah. chest and it's on like this a fishing silver suit. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's on like clear. a fishing line so that it just is like floating. Oh my god. And that other guy was just showing his Calvins really prominently because it's the 90s. Sure. Got to have your Calvins. Not, oh no, someone wrecked a car. Yeah. What happened? Is it the girl? <gasps> the yeah, girl! wow, she's dead. <laughs> oh my god, look at the dramatic no! to the sky. No! Oh my Falling god. to the knees. Singing in the rain is the only thing you can do now, man. Ooh, raspy Ooh, or scream. screaming in the rain, I guess, <laughs> is more accurate. I do love the it, the look of the t-shirt, of the really baggy shirt that's only buttoned one in the middle, so it gives a nice big tummy window. It's... <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a car alarm is going off in the background. Wow. wow, this choreo. It's funny that a lot of it was like bent over, like they were supposed to do it yes. in the small room. They were yeah, like constantly the in a Yeah, because the opening shot, <laughs> it looked like they were in an Alice in Wonderland, like too yes. tiny of a room where the ceiling yeah. was too low. Yeah. Wow. Goofy. Goofy. A bit goofy indeed. A bit goofy indeed. <laughs> All right. Weekly recommendation time. Um, I have a recommendation that is specific to this episode and a song that we heard at the beginning of the episode. Great. Lay it on us. The first song in our timeline, Jumbo, Jumpo, Mambo mm -hmm. by Cool. Jumbo, Mambo. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. Was covered in 2019 by the Inky Gaio hosts at the time, which were Min Hyuk from Monster X, Jae Hyun from NCT, and Noun from April. And they're really adorable, and it sounds so nice. Like yeah. all cool covers, it sounds so much nicer than the cool version because it's in tune, and so it's much more pleasant, and they like look really adorable. So just have to recommend that if you haven't seen it. 
Nice. That's a good rec. It is very, very cute. All right. My recommendation is in honor of a bomb that was dropped upon me (laughs) earlier in the festival (laughs) during our Meet the Host segment (laughs) with our dear, uh, dear Megan. I learned that my my show new is enlisting. Like this week, <laughs> like now, I think he's gone by now. Goodbye, show new. We have like eight days. I think. <laughs> All right, fine. It's not nearly enough. Um, but as soon as I learned this, I immediately went to my my favorite show new content, uh, the show that made him my emotional support monster, which is his mukbang on YouTube. It's on the M2 channel, and the Korean title is Om Yum 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 Yum, <laughs> but the English title is Yum 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 Yum. So if you just type in Shonu Mukbang, you'll find it, but it's uh-huh. really adorable. Um, I just find him so pleasant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't usually, I don't watch mukbangs. Like, I don't really care right. about watching people eat. But I do love Shonu, and he is just like such a simple person who really only thinks about his next meal, and like that's his only priority in life. And he's so serious when he eats it, and he eats with his (laughs) eyebrows. He's so expressive when he takes every bite, and it's just, I just, I just think he's neat. I just think he's neat. Um, so yeah, if you need, uh, you know, a, someone to eat lunch with, may I suggest Shonu? Om nom yeah. nom. <laughs> That's a really good suggestion. That's a really good suggestion. Yeah, that was a very funny moment in our Meet the Host, and apparently it happened to several people during their <laughs> live shows on Saturday. Um, I woke up and saw the news and mm. like went to immediately text you, and I was like, no, I can't. Like, we have a lot going on today. We're nervous. I'm not going to sully this with, like, upsetting news. Like, she will know eventually. I'm just going to hold it. And then found out live. (laughs) In front of a bunch of people. But it made for a really great moment. So Yeah, you know, at least it was entertaining. At least it was entertaining. (laughs) Um, All right. Well, that is it for this week. One more time. Thank you again to everybody who came or donated to the KPSN festival. Mm -hmm. Um, It was a really good time. And in a couple months, we're going to have to start planning next year's one. Yeah. Um, Huge shout out to everyone who played a part in organizing it. I know that there were a lot of like sponsors that got more involved this year. um, And I think it was just a great success. I know that we surpassed our donation goal, um, which is awesome. And so um, let's see what next year brings. Always exciting and an honor to be part of. Absolutely. Um, in the meantime, if you would like to find us online, we can be found at Pod on Twitter and Instagram, amakpoppod at gmail.com for emails, 181-AMAKpop5 for voicemails. Physical mail can be sent to P.O. Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90026. You can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash amakpoppod um, and get extra bonus episodes and participate in episodes. Next week, we will be doing a song battle. And when you are a seasoned tier fan patron, you get to contribute votes for song battles. So if you want to be involved in things like that, join our Patreon. And yeah, come back next week for a fun song battle. Yeah, come on back and we'll see how our scores fared against the seasoned fan tier listeners. All right. And until then, goodbye. Bye-bye. Jonghyun, you're inspiration. 